In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the total return on a stock. So the total return is a function of two things. One is the dividends that are issued by the firm, so the amount of dividends per share, and then also the capital gain. And capital gain is how much the share price increases during the period. So if we're talking about a, a year, at the beginning of the year, the share price is one amount, and then at the end of the year, it's a different amount. We're going to look at that increase because that's an increase in wealth or an increase in the return to the person holding the share. So we can parse these two elements out into a really nice formula where we say that the total return is equal to, and we've got this D I have for dividends. Oops, I'm going to put dividend, D-I-V, maybe make it a little easier for you. So that's a dividend. And then P naught, P-O here, or P-0, that's the share price at the beginning of the year. So we've got the beginning of the year share price, and at the end of the year it goes to, we'll say, P sub 1, right? And so this is the dividend yield. That's how we can think about this. We'll think we'll call it the dividend yield. And then we also have the capital gain. That's our increase or our return on the share price. So what we're doing with this is we're just saying, look, we're going to take the difference between the end of the year's price and what we started with and then scale that and divide it by what we started with to begin with. So it'll be a little bit easier when we walk through, uh, some, put some actual numbers to it. And we can actually, because we have the same denominator in each case, uh, you know, I've just kind of made it separate here so you'd understand the capital gain component and the dividend yield components of this. But we can actually put it all together in one convenient formula. And I'm just going to actually walk you through an example so it'll be a little easier for you to understand. So let's say that you're considering investing in XYZ Corporation and you say, I want to know what the return was the past year. And you look and you say, well, their share price on January 31st was $31 a share. So that's going to be P naught, right? This is P naught. And then we need to know, well, what was the share price at the end of the year? Well, at the end of the day on December 31st, you look at the share price and it was $32.50 a share. So we say that that is P sub 1. Now we're going to assume that the firm didn't have any stock splits or anything during the year. That would complicate things. So we went from, and we think about, we started at $31 a share, and then we went up to $32.50 a share. So we had an increase in the share price. So that's going to affect our return. Then also, during that year, on June 30th, the firm issued a dividend of $0.25 cents a share. So that 0.25 is going to be our D. It's going to be our dividend. So now we can just plug numbers in to our formula, right? Because we have the P naught, we have the P sub 1, and we have the D, the dividend, and we can just plug and chug and find out what the total return for our stock is. So the total return is going to be equal to 0.25. That's the dividend per share, right? You don't take the whole dividend for all the firm, that everything that was issued. You just, a dividend per share, and then you have here, our capital gain, right? The 32.50 minus the 31. That's just the P sub 1 minus P naught. Now, we scale all of that, the whole thing, we, we, we divide that by the beginning share price, what we started with, right? So this is what we receive. This is what we're parsing out here, that numerator. We're saying what, what gain we had. We're looking at our gains during the year. Then we're going to scale that by what we started with. So then that will allow us to compute our total return. So let's just say here we'll have, I'll break it out for you, you'd have $1.75 in the numerator, then you divide that by the 31, give a little more space, that's going to equal 0 0.056, which is the same as saying 5.6%. Now I've, I've rounded here, but basically I just want you to understand, so this means if you bought this stock on January 1st, and you held it to December 31st of that same year. And we say, okay, look, given these dividends, given the change in the share price, what was your return? What was your total return from owning this stock? And it would be 